In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we have the privilege of celebrating this Holy Eucharist on this 15th Sunday of Summer Ordinary Time through the goodness of this wonderful television studio. So as we gather and through, the good, through television to celebrate, let us be mindful of our sins. Let us open our hearts to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, bread of life, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us in word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly, heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten, begotten Son, Son Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for, that, for the faith they profess are accounted Christians <clears throat> the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The, the seed, seed that, that falls, falls on good, good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's watercourses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on, on good ground, ground will, will yield a fruitful, a fruitful harvest. harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good, good ground will yield a fruitful, a fruitful harvest. harvest. You have crowned the earth with your bounty and your paths overflow with rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing closes the hills. The, the seed, seed that, that falls on good, good ground will, will yield a fruitful, fruitful harvest. harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed, seed that, that falls on good ground, ground will yield a fruitful, fruitful harvest. harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to fertility and of its own accord but because of the one who subjected it, and hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption 
and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Christ is a sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on the rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good to celebrate this Mass with you again this morning. And so we do so with hopes that you're doing all right for all of us in the midst of this whole new way of being because of the pandemic and because of all its consequences, because we know what it is and the realities that we face today, but we don't know what is before us. But in the midst of that, it's so good for us to gather in Holy Eucharist today. One of the great things that we do know is the promise of our God is that I'm always with you. And it's the same that God who is always teaching us, always wanting us to understand more fully how God works the best ways that we can, but most assuredly wants us to be simply open to the power of his presence in the midst of our goodness, in the midst of our joyful moments, and in the midst of our worries and anxieties, our sickness, our challenges of health or whatever it might be. And so, my friends, as we continue in this summer ordinary time with the Gospel of Matthew, is that we as disciples of the Lord just allow ourselves to continue to be taught. And in this, these days of ordinary time, that there are three discourses that are quite prominent in the Gospels that we hear. So just recently, the first discourse was the Sermon on the Mount. The second discourse was the missionary discourse as Jesus prepared his apostles to go out and to, be, to begin to do what he did and had taught them to bring his presence and his word to all people. And we now enter into, for a couple of weeks, with the third discourse, which really focuses on the parables of Jesus, these wonderful ways that Jesus taught, chose to, to teach us, again, so many things about the Lord. And the cluster of, of Jesus' most known parables are really those that we find in this ordinary time. And they affirm the important to affirm the real importance of the parables and helping us to grow in our understanding and our living of our faith. And so they're, they're keys to our understanding. And so, in the parable that we just heard, perhaps one of the most common ones, the most well-known, the parable of the sower and the seed, really sets the stage for us and the one, the parables that will continue to grow. And that key of God's word, as was spoken about in the first reading also, the God's word that is sent and how there are four different experiences or interests in 
or instances in that parable that we just heard of people's receptivity to that word. And so first of all, the seed that is sown on a footpath. And the first instance of that, the Jew, Jewish people, as we would well know too, that in those days seed was very expensive. And so it was always deemed the farmer or the gardener to sow it very carefully and to be able to help it to be fruitful. And again, probably true for all of us who love gardening and for all of our farmers. But as we listen to this story about the sower selling or throwing seed onto a footpath, it almost sounds like that farmer is a little bit careless, is it not? as well as in the second instance on seed that was ending up on rocky ground. Again, kind of an image of a careless sower that, again, nothing really would grow there. And if it did, it would be choked off by, by just whatever was around it. It didn't have the, the sustenance or the, or the deep, deep soil. Some seeds falling thirdly among thorns that, again, would choke them off. And so... Perhaps Jesus' audience, as he sat in the boat and offering this parable a long time ago, that they, they, perhaps they were ones who were kind of wondering about who is this kind of crazy, careless farmer, who, who, uh, and what does this have to do with the kingdom of God? The third or fourth instance. Finally, that seems like the farmer got it right and sowed that seed on good soil that became productive, that grew grain, that they grew the wheat. And the goodness of it says at the end of that is that because it was good soil, that it would bring a harvest of 60, 30, or even 100 fold. And it's interesting to note that in the first century, that an ordinary harvest was considered to be about a seven and a half fold. Tenfold would be a really good harvest. So when Jesus talks about this good soil being productive of a 60 or a 30 or a hundred fold, that just speaks to the miraculous extent of that goodness. And so the sower, again, is we trust God, who's sowing God's word. And it's not about God being careless and sowing on footpaths or among thorns or whatever it might be. It is about our God who offers his life, his word to absolutely everyone and every circumstance and every culture and every religion, whatever it might be. It's God's generosity of sowing the very word of his life and his teachings to everyone. But again, a deeper meaning of the parable is the reality that, that we have different responses to that word. And that's what those images in today's parable really speak to, as they are kind of like for us this morning, kind of an examination of conscience as how well we're really open to the truth of God's word. How are we responding to that word about God's kingdom and making it more and more a part of our lives and our goodness? How are we responding to that word that allows us to really transform our own lives, to, to grow more deeply into that image and likeness of God, and to grow in that trust and that faith of his presence always with us, and how we are called to be as good witnesses, people of evangelization, to bring that hope and that word to others, especially in very difficult times, like in the midst of the pandemic that we are. And so we're invited always to be good soil, just receptive of his presence, of his word, and the goodness that we really have ears to hear his word and have that openness to how he continues to teach us and to guide us and to nurture us. So we thank God for that life-giving word. And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our our sake, sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He He suffered suffered death and was buried and and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess confess one baptism baptism for the forgiveness forgiveness of sins, sins, and and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We who have received God's mercy humbly ask for now the needs of the church and the world as we offer these petitions. That Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all ministers may be true sores of the seeds of faith to those they shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, states, and local communities, that they will work for our country's security and the safety and well-being of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, as persons of faith, may seek to grow our own faith seeds and those of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the love and compassion of God may be known to all who are ill, living with a disability, or dealing with other life challenges, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those near death may know the true faith and inner peace. And for all who have died, especially Lucille Reisinger, whom we remember at this Mass, may they now live forever in the eternal peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Now, in a moment of silence, let us offer our personal prayers to our loving God. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, bringer of the harvest, you give us every good thing. Grant, please, what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you. And grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord Lord God God of hosts, heaven heaven and and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and, and the, the glory, glory are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, 
that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are led in worship this morning by our presider, Monsignor Larry Bakke, the Director of Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison, and the pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe. I am Peggy Weber, a member of St. Patrick Parish in Cottage Grove, and serve as a member of the Apostolate Advisory Council. It is always a pleasure to join Monsignor Larry in providing this television mass ministry of the Apostolate. Thanks to the American Sign Language interpretation of Sue Gudenkoff of St. Dennis Parish of Madison and the Apostolate providing closed captioning. Our sisters and brothers in faith who are deaf or hard of hearing were able to share with us in this Eucharistic celebration. The very special ministry of generosity and social concern for persons of all faiths living with disabilities was provided by the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV. On behalf of Monsignor Larry and the Apostolate, I thank you for joining our faith in our Mass this morning. Until next Sunday morning, make it a beautiful week, and may your life be one of knowing the love and care God has for you.